Hello friends, my name is Rubal Sandiela. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I will tell you very interesting things about lawn tennis. Firstly, lawn tennis is commonly known as a uh, is known as like royal game. Basically, this is a popular racket sport played between two players. In case of singles or two. teams of two players each that is doubles in doubles like there are four players so this ga game is played on a rectangular court divided by a net and the objective is to score points by hitting the tennis ball over the net and into the opponent's court in a way that opponent cannot return the ball so so coming to the key elements of lawn tennis so this includes rules firstly thing first thing That's a tennis court. Tennis can be played on a various surfaces, including grass, clay, and hard courts such as concrete or asphalt and carpet courts. Will also be included. So dimension of the court and the layout of the lines are standardized. That is fixed. So coming to the scoring, scoring system in tennis is very unique. A game is made up of points, and a set is made up of games. to win a game a player or team must score at least 4 points and have at least 2 point advantage so the points are scored as follows 15 love 30 love 40 love and 4 point is like game if both players or the team or team have won 3 points it is called deuce and if a player must win two consecutive points to win the game so coming to the matches matches are usually best of 3 sets for women and best of 5 sets for men in a major tournament and a set is won by the first player or team to win 6 games with a margin of at least 2 games if the set reaches a 6 all score then a tie breaker is played the next part is serve the game begins with with a serve with a player serving ball from behind the baseline to the opponent service box the serve must land within the opponent service box and it should ball should clear the net next thing is next thing is rally so after serve player engages in a rally so hitting the ball back and forth over the net so ob the objective is to strategically place the ball in a way that makes it challenging for the opponent to return so next thing is rules Tennis has various rules regarding the size of the court and height of the net, scoring and player conduct. So there are rules about faults, let serves and use of the racket. Tennis is like played at both amateur and professional levels with major tournaments such as Grand Slam events like Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon and US Open attracting global attention. It also requires a combination of skill strategy and physical fitness so coming to the next part the types of courts in lawn tennis so in lawn tennis we have different playing surfaces and the playing surfaces can vary and different type of courts have distinct character their different characteristics that can affect the style of play the four main types of tennis courts are as follows so first court first type is grass court its features are like characteristics are grass courts are natural turf surfaces it's often associated with the wimbledon championship the grass surface can be fast providing low and unpredictable bounces for example wimbledon is the most famous tournament played on grass courts so next type of court is clay court so its characteristics are like as follows clay courts are like made up of crushed stone brick or shale the surface is slower than grass and the ball bounces much higher with more spin player often slide on the clay to reach shots and like players gets more engaged in rallies so examples the french open the roland garros that can be called as is played on red clay while some tournaments use green clay hard through in united states and the blue clay was some years back was used in madrid 
like just for one year so the next type of coat is hard coat its characteristics are like hard coats like are made up of asphalt or concrete covered with a synthetic or acry acrylic surface the speed of play can vary and it's based on the specific type of hard coat for example us open is played on hard coat as well as many other tournaments around the world so the final type is carpet coats its characteristics are like very unique carpet coats are made up of various material including textile or poly polyurethane surfaces they can be fast or slow depending on the specific type of carpet used it's some something that is point to be noted carpet coats have become very less common in professional tennis and you find it very rare and many tournaments have transited to the other surfaces so each type of court presents unique challenges and it can influence the playing style of participants friends players who excel on one type of surface may find it challenging to adapt to their game on the other surface the variety of court types add an additional layer of excitement and diversity to the to the sports of tennis so like how are these courts prepared you must find it very exciting so i must tell you the preparation of tennis courts involves several steps to ensure the proper playing surface safety and durability so this process may vary slightly depending on the type of court surfaces so the first court is grass court and first thing comes its is preparation the grass court is typically sown with grass seeds and the surface is mowed to a short height that is grass is trimmed to a short height and its maintenance is like done with like regular watering mowing and rolling are very essential to maintain the grass court's quality and the grass courts may be top dressed with a mixture of soil and grass seed to repair any damaged areas so next coat is clay coat so how it is prepared it is like this is the base of clay coat the base of a clay coat like consists of crushed stone or brick covered with a layer of finely crushed red or green clay and the, this clay is then packed and leveled and its maintenance is very complex and it's very ex expensive this regular watering is required to keep the clay moist preventing it from becoming too dry and dusty maintenance also involves dragging and rolling the coat to maintain on like getting the even surface and repair any irregularities or problems hard coat next is hard coat and how it is prepared hard coats hard coats are constructed on a solid base of asphalt or concrete over this base Several layers of materials are applied including a binder layer or acrylic surface and the top coat and how it is maintained its maintenance is very easy hard, hard coats require regular cleaning resurfacing and crack repair at every 2 year cracks can develop over time due to weather conditions hot like hot conditions and player impact resurfacing involves applying a new layer of acrylic rubber material to ensure a smooth and consistent playing surface so next coat is carpet coats and how it is prepared like carpet coats may like this have various base construction including a asphalt or concrete this carpet which can, that can be made of synthetic material is then installed over the base its maintenance is like you need regular cleaning and maintenance and this is very necessary to preserve the carpet's quality repairs may be additionally needed for any damage or wear or occasionally resurfacing may be required so regardless of the court type maintenance is a continuous process to ensure player safety and a consistent playing experience tennis facilities often have dedicated ground keeping staff who are responsible for ongoing care and maintenance of the courts proper preparation and maintenance contribute to the longevity and the quality of the playing surface allowing tennis enthusiasts to enjoy the sports in optimal conditions so what are the dimension of courts my friend let me tell you the dimension of tennis courts are fixed and standardized by the international tennis federation 
and it, this dimension are applicable to both single and doubles matches and here are some key dimensions for a tennis court so the length of the tennis court so like overall length of a tennis court is 78 feet that is 23.75 meters and the width of the court for singles match is 27 feet 8 point like it's 8.23 meters and for doubles match court width is increased to 36 feet that is 10.97 meters so that next is baseline baseline is like back area area of the court that is running area that is running parallel to the net the baseline's length when you talk about it this baseline's length is 39 feet that is 11.89 meters so the service line if we talk about service line the service line is located parallel to the net and is 21 feet that that is like 6.40 meters from the net and this service line divides the court into sir into the service boxes so this thing comes is net net height so the height of the net is suspended across the center of the court divided dividing it into the two equal halves so the standard height of the net is three feet that is 0.91 meters at the center and is supported by the post pole position three feet outside the double side line service boxes the like service boxes are rectangles on each side of the net and they are marked by the service line and the single side lines each service box is 21 feet by 13.5 feet uh, that is 6.40 meters by 4.11 meters these dimensions are standardized and fixed to ensure consistency in tennis court design across various tournament and facilities it's worth noticing that these measurements are for outdoor tennis courts indoor courts may have slightly variations but they are generally adhering to the same principles specifications provided here are for adult competitions and these are like variations for junior and wheelchair tennis so talking about the rules what are the rules of tennis my friend let me tell you the rules of tennis are standardized and or like fixed by the international tennis federation and these are rules are followed in most tennis competitions worldwide so here is a summary of the basic rule of tennis so points are scored as follows 15 love 30 love 40 love in the game game if both player or team reaches 40 all deuce then one player was must have to win two consecutive points to win a game and is if if a set is to be won by the first player or the team winning the first six, six game with a margin of at least two games wins the set if the set reaches a six all tie tie score that is six all score then a tiebreaker is played matches are typically best of three sets for women and best of five set sets for men next thing is serve and return so the server must stand behind the baseline and hit the ball into the diagonally opposite service box on the opponent side and the receiver also must return the ball after one bounce and aim it to land in the opponent's court so so if we talk about points a player wins a point when the opponent fails to return the ball within the boundaries of the court or commits a fault or an error like hitting the ball out or double fault on the serve the server alternative side after each point so the next thing is game if like if a game is won by the first player or team to score at least four points within two point advantage set a set is won by the first team or first player or a team if they win six game with a margin of at least two games if the set reaches the score of six all then a tiebreaker must be played so the coming to the tiebreaker part if like in a tiebreaker players or teams take turns serving two points each until one side reaches seven points with a margin of at least two points so the next thing is match overall match is won by a the team or a player that wins the majority of, of the sets that is two out of three sets for men and three out of five sets for men sorry two, two out of three sets for women and three out of five sets for men the court adequate is the most important thing 
that a player must follow so the players are expected to stick to the rules and rules of fair play and sportsmanship obviously there should be a respect for opponents officials and integrity of the game should be maintained and is essential faults the faults include hitting the ball out of the court serving foot faults or double faults that is two consecutive service faults a player is allowed to serve and if the first service fault they get a second chance that is second attempt and talking about the let part if a serving service hits the net cord and lands in the correct service box it is called a let and the server gets another chance to serve again for serve <clears throat> so these rules provide a basic vision of how tennis is played and it is important to note that variation exists for different levels of play including junior and wheelchair tennis additionally specific tournaments may have additional rules or variations so player and officials should be familiar with the regulations of the event they are participating in or overseeing so next thing that comes to your mind is who makes these rules and how it is monitored so the rules of tennis are established and maintained by the itf that is international tennis federation and itf is the governing body for sports of tennis worldwide and its responsibilities include overseeing the rules of the game organizing international competition and promoting the development of the tennis globally so the most important thing comes is rules making process the itf is responsible for periodically reviewing and updating the rules of tennis any proposed rule changes typically go through a process that involves input from various stakeholders including players coaches officials and national tennis associations the itf technical and rules committee play a key role in evaluating proposed changes before they are presented to the, presented to the itf board of directors for approval so next thing is monitoring and enforcement the enforcement of tennis rules occurs at the various levels from local and the national competitions to international tournaments and here is how the monitoring and enforcement process generally works so first is local and national level so local and national tennis associations or federations are responsible for organizing and overseeing tennis competitions within their jurisdictions and the certified officials includes umpire referees who are trained to ensure that matches are conducted according to the rules international level so itf oversees the international competitions and sets the standard for officiating at major tournaments including grand slam events like wimbledon us open and in the international matches the the matches these matches are like over officiated by the certified itf officials including chair umpires and the line judges technology and challenges have emerged into tennis and they have played major role in players career like so in many professional professional tournaments technology is also used to help with officiating like hockey for example a system that uses cameras to track the trajectory of the ball helping to determine whether a ball is in or out so players are usually allowed a limit li limited number of challenges per set to contest a line call and if the challenge is successful then player retains that right to challenge and otherwise they lose the opportunity for further challenges in that set they so the next thing is code of conduct the itf also set guidelines for the code of conduct and sportsmanship on the tennis court and so the players are expected to stick to the principles and violations can result in penalties fines or other disciplinary actions so in sum so to summarize the itf establishes and updates the rules of tennis and enforcement and monitoring of these rules occur at various levels within local national or and international organizations playing key roles in it use of trained officials and in sub cases technology helps ensure the fair and consistent application of the rules in tennis competitions so the next thing come thing that comes to your mind is what is itf ITF stands for International Tennis Federation and it is the global governing body for the sports of tennis and it is also responsible for overseeing and coordinating international tennis activities so the ITF's primary role is to set the rules and regulations for tennis organize ten international competitions and promote the development of tennis worldwide so 
so the key functions and responsibilities of the ITF includes the rule making so talking about the rule making the ITF establishes the establishes and updates the rules of tennis including technical rules for the game equipment specifications and the code of conduct for players and the officials and the next thing is international competition ITF organizes and sanctions a variety of international tennis competitions ranging from junior and senior events to the prestigious tournaments like the Davis Cup men's team competition and the Fed Cup women's team competition the ITF also oversees the junior Grand Slam events so next thing is junior and senior development ITF is involved in the development of tennis players at both junior and the senior levels. It also supports the programs initiatives to nurture the young talent and promote the growth of tennis around the world. So next thing that ITF is responsible for is officiating. The ITF sets the standard for officiating in tennis matches certified officials also like and also empires and referees all these these persons play a crucial role in ensuring that matches are conducted according to the rules and maintaining the fair play and the last part that ITF is responsible for is junior and senior development okay this is done anti-doping and integrity that the next thing is thing so ITF works to ensure the integrity of the sports and promotes anti-doping measures. It also collaborates with other organizations to maintain a clean and ethical environment in tennis. So next responsibility for ITF is technical and medical support. ITF also provides technical support, research and medical expertise to enhance the understanding of the sports and contribute to the well-being of the players. And the most important thing that is responsibility of the ITF is international relations. The ITF fosters relationship with national tennis associations and other tennis related organizations to create a unified and coordinated approach to the development of development of and promotion of tennis. The ITF is headquartered in London and its decisions and policies influence the global landscape of tennis. The organizing organization collaborates with the other major stakeholders in the tennis community, including national tennis associations, Grand Slam tournaments and the player organizations. So the next part is very interesting. This is like you should you should know this. What is ATP? So the ATP stands for Association of Tennis Professionals. It is a professional men's tennis organizational group that governs the men's professional tennis circuit. The ATP was established in 1972 with the goal of representing representing the interests of the male professional tennis players and organizing professional tournaments. So the key aspects. Of the ATP includes the tour organization. The ATP like organizes the ATP tour, which is the elite professional tennis circuit for male players. This tour also includes a series of tournaments that is held throughout the year, ranging from ATP to 250 events to ATP to 500 events, and the most prestigious known as the ATP Master Thousand series. So the four Grand Slam tournaments also included in it Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, US Open are not like or are not organized by ATP but are separate entities so next thing is for ATP is player repre representation the ATP represents the interest of the male professional tennis players it works to address ten tennis players concerns negotiate they like negotiate with the tournament organizers and collaborate with other tennis organizations so the next thing for ATP is like ATP rankings. So ATP maintains the ATP ranking of the players and a system that assigns point to the player based on their performance in the ATP tour events. These like rankings determine a player's standing position or like position in the professional tennis world and are used to determine seedings in the tournament. So the next thing is ATP's governance. So the ATP is governed by a board of directors which includes player representatives and the board also makes a decision on the various matters related to the ATP tour rules and other important issues. Next thing is for ATP is players council. The ATP players council consists of elected player representatives 
who provide input on the various aspects of the tour including scheduling rules and other player related matters and the ATP finals so the at the end of the season ATP organizes the ATP finals a prestigious tournament that features the top 8 elite singles players and the doubles team based on their performance throughout the year so the so the next thing is development programs for ATP the ATP is involved in the player development initiatives to support young and emerging talents in the world of men's professional tennis it is also like important to note that there is a separate women's organization called WTA Women's Tennis Association that governs the women's professional tennis circuit the ATP and WTA collaborate on various matters but they operate independently in organizing and overseeing their respective tours so next thing thing comes is what are ITF tournaments and how these tournaments are planned by ITF so the international tournament Tennis Federation ITF organizes and sanctions a variety of tennis tournaments worldwide catering to the different levels of place, age groups and geographic regions. These ITF tournaments serve as a pathway or a or a way for players to gain ranking points and progress in their tennis careers. Here is a vision of ITF tournaments and how they are planned. So there are different types of ITF tournaments. First is ITF Pro Circuit. The ITF Pro Circuit is entry level professional circuit for players who are like aiming to transition from amateur to the professional ranking so these tournaments are on the ITA pro circuit and these tournaments may vary in prize money and they like provide equal opportunities for the players to an ATP ranking in men's or WTA ranking for women's ITF junior circuit so ITF junior circuit is for young players that is under 18 age group players so who are looking to develop their skills and gain international experience to upgrade to the men's category. So these junior tournaments are categorized by, categorized by the grade ranging from grade A highest level to the grade 5 that is starting level and they contribute to a player's ITF junior world ranking. Next thing is senior category ITF senior circuit. So ITF senior circuit is for players who are aged above age 35 or over providing competitive opportunities for senior players across different age categories so next topic is like planning ITF tournaments ITF regulations you must know if you are planning for it so ITF establishes a regulations and guidelines that govern the organization and conduct of the ITF tournaments these regulations cover various aspects including tournament categories, format, eligibility criteria and prize money. So what are these tournament categories? IT, ITF tournaments are categorized based on factors such as prize money, ranking, points awarded and the level of competition. These categories include future pro circuit in junior category, grade A, the highest level, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4 and the grade 5 in junior circuit that is under 18 host that next thing is host organizations like the people who are organizing it so local tennis associations or clubs or like organizing committees often apply to the to host ITF tournaments and these like these organizations work closely with ITF to meet the required standards and ensure the smooth execution of the event so next thing comes it scheduling when it is happening so the ITF in collaboration with the national tennis bodies or association schedules tournaments throughout the year to create a comprehensive calendar and this this calendar includes events in different regions to provide global opportunity for all players. So next thing, thing like that comes is very important that is prize money that everybody wants. So prize money for ITF pro circuit tournament is determined by the category of the event and this, this ITF provide guidelines but host organizations often secure sponsorship and funding to offer prize money to participants so next thing comes is whether a player is eligible to play in it or not so that this is like player eligibility so the itf sets the eligibility eligibility criteria for players to participate in a tournament on the basis of ranking so these criteria may include age restrictions ranking requirements and other factors and next is officiating itf tournaments are uh, officiated by the certified officials including a chair umpire line judges and the, and the ITF also provides 
training and certification for officials to ensure the consistency and fair officiating so next thing is communication that is very important so the itf communicates tournament information updates and results through its official channels and it collaborates with the national tennis bodies to ensure that players are well informed about the upcoming events so in summary itf tournaments are organized with the goal of providing diverse and accessible competitive opportunities for tennis players at various levels the planning process involves collaboration between the itf host organizations and the other stakeholders to ensure the successful execution of the tournaments around the world so what are atp tournaments and how tournaments are planned so atp tournaments are professional tennis tournaments organized by the association of tennis professionals the governing body for men's professional tennis these tournaments are part of the atp tour which is elite professional tennis circuit for male players these atp tournaments vary in the terms of prize money ranking points and the prestige with the most prestigious event being the atp master 1000 masters and the four grand slam tournaments so here is an summary of atp tournaments and how they are planned types of atp tournaments so first is grand slam tournaments the four grand slam tournaments are the australian open french open that is roland garros wimbledon and the us open these are the most prestigious and the significant event in men's tennis offering the highest prize money and highest points with highest ranking next thing is atp master 1000 series so atp masters 1000 series consists of nine tournaments held in various locations worldwide these events are considerably highly prestigious and offer a significant number of ranking points so next thing next is atp tour 500 series that is below it below in it below below 1000 series so the atp tour 500 series include tournaments with a lower prize money and ranking point distribution compared to the masters 1000 series these tournaments are st still significant and attract top level players so next th next is atp tour 250 series atp tour 250 series consists of smaller tournaments with lower prize money and ranking point these events provide opportunities for players to compete and earn points so next thing is planning the atp tournaments so while planning you have to see the calendar and next thing is atp calendar the atp in collaboration with the tournament organizers plans an annual calendar that includes various tournaments throughout the year the calendar is strategically designed to provide a balance of events considering factors such as surface type geographic location and player commitments so the next is tournament categories ATP tournaments are categorized based on the number of rankings, points, and the prize money offered. This categorization helps players plan their schedules and prioritize events. Bidding process. So, like the cities and venues are interested in hosting ATP tournaments, submit their bids to the ATP. The ATP evaluates these, evaluates or check these bids based on the factors such as facilities, financial commitments, and the overall. feasibility so next is scheduling atp tour is divided into different seasons including the australian summer the clay court season the grass court season and the north american hard court season these tournaments are strategically placed within these seasons to create a coherent and a balanced schedule so the next thing is players commitment the atp require requires top ranked players to fulfill certain commitments regarding their participation in various tournament categories this helps ensure that high profile players are distributed across different events and enhancing the comp or increasing the competitiveness of the tournament prize money so the tournament organizers organizers secure funding and sponsorship to offer prize money to participants and this amount of prize money varies based on the tournament category next is officiating atp tournaments are officiated by the certified officials including chair umpires and the line judges The ATP works to maintain high officiating standards and ensure that the tournaments comply with this, this, these standards. Communication. So ATP communicates 
its tournament information updates results through official channels including its website and social media platform players receive information about the events and fans always stay informed about the latest developments in to summarize atp tournaments are planned through a collaborative effort between atp and tournament organizers the planning process involves consideration of scheduling tournament categories or a player's commitment prize money and other logistics logical aspects to create a co- cohesive and competitive tennis calendar so next thing is how can a player take part in itf tournaments players can take part in itf on itf tournaments by following specific steps and meeting certain eligibility criteria itf tournaments they cater to various levels and age groups including the itf pro circuit for professionals the itf the itf junior circuit for young players and the itf senior circuit for players aged above 35 or like age 35 here are general guide on how players can participate in itf tournaments itf pro circuit so first thing is professional status to compete in itf pro circuit events players usually need to have professional status this may involve registering with the atp association of tennis professional for men or the wta women's tennis association for women so next thing is itf players identification number so players need to get or obtain an itf player identification number this number is used to track a player's result and their rankings across the itf tournaments so so next is entry system players enter itf pro circuit events through the itf entry system entry deadlines are typically several are typically several weeks before the start of the tournament so next is ranking players may need to have a certain rank to gain direct entry into the main draw otherwise they may need to go through qualifying rounds so next is wild card and special exemptions tournament organizers may award wild wild card or free entries to players of their choice and often local talents or promising players special exemptions may be granted to players in some cases who are playing in some other tournaments without any meeting any specific criteria entry fees players are usually required to pay entry fees to participate in itf pro circuit events so the next next category is itf junior circuit first thing is age eligibility itf junior circuit events are typically for players under the age of 18 age eligibility may be vary for specific tournaments next is itf junior player player identification number similar to the pro circuit junior player needs an itf junior identif- identification number and so the next is entry system junior players enter the itf junior junior circuit events through the itf junior entry system entry deadlines are set by the tournament organizers ranking players itf junior world ranking determine their eligibility and seeding in tournaments wild card and special exemption as with the pro circuit wild card and special exemptions may be granted <coughs> itf senior circuit this is next category so first thing includes age eligibility so itf senior circuit events are for players who are aged above 35 or over with different age categories example 35 plus 40 plus or 45 plus itf senior player identification number similarly they similar play senior player also need to have an itf senior players identification number entry system senior players enter the itf senior circuit events through the itf seniors entry system entry deadlines are set by the tournament organizers ranking players itf senior world ranking determine their eligibility and seeding in tournaments wild card and special exemptions so the wild card and special exemptions may be granted to seniors players and players who are interested in participating in itf tournaments should regularly check their it website and the specific tournament website for entry information deadline and also for any updates regarding the tournament additionally players are encouraged to communicate with their national tennis association body or nas- national association coaches and relevant governing bodies for guidance on the tournament entry process so how can a player participate in atp tournaments players can participate in atp tournaments meant by following specific procedures and meeting eligibility criteria atp tournaments are part of the atp tour which is professional men's 
tennis circuit here is a general guide on how players can participate in ATP tournaments <coughs> so next is ATP 2 tournaments first thing includes is professional status players need to have professional status to compete in ATP 2 events this typically involves registering with ATP and obtaining an ATP ranking so ATP ranking a player's ATP ranking determines his eligibility and seedings in ATP tournaments the higher the ranking the better the chances of direct entry into the main draw without going through qualifying rounds ATP entry system players enter the ATP tour events through the ATP entry system this system considers the players ATP ranking and assigns points based on the performance in previous tournaments direct entry and qualifying rounds players with higher ATP ranking receive direct entry into the main draw of tournaments and the players with lower ranking may need to go, go through qualifying rounds to earn a spot in the main draw. Wild cards. Tournament organizers may award wild cards to selective players. Wild card provides direct entry into the main draw and are of, often given to local talents promising young players or the players returning from injury. Special exemptions. In some cases, players may receive special exemptions that allow them to enter tournament without meeting the usual eligibility criteria. This could be due to injury, illness or the other exceptional circumstances entry fees players are usually required to pay entry fees to participate in ATP tour events Grand Slam tournaments so first thing include is professional status player need to have a professional status and an ATP ranking to compete in Grand Slam tournaments direct entry and qualifying rounds <coughs> direct entry into the main draw of Grand Slam tournament is determined by players ATP ranking Qualifying rounds are held for players outside the direct entry criteria. Wild card and special exemption. Grand Slam organizers are also awarded wild cards and may grant special exemption to certain players. National Tennis Association. National Tennis Association often play a key role in selecting players for wild cards or influencing the special exemptions. ATP Finals. So first thing is top performers. ATP Finals features the top eight singles players and the doubles team based on their performance over the ATP Tour season qualification. Player qualify for the ATP finals based on their ATP rankings. The top players in the singles and doubles ranking earn a spot in the year end championship alternate. In case of player withdrawal or injuries, alternative players may be called to replace them. Players interested in participating in ATP tournaments should regularly check their ATP websites and specific tournament websites for entry information deadlines and update com communication communication with coaches player representatives and relevant grooming bodies also important for staying informed about the tournament entry process and any changes to the schedule so how these itf ranking points are calculated in itf tournaments the <coughs> itf international tennis federation assigns a ranking points based on a player's performance in itf tournaments the ITF ranking system is used for players participating in the ITF Pro circuit which include both men's and women's event. The ranking points are crucial for determining a player's position in the ITF rankings and gaining entry into the higher level tournaments. Here is an overview of how ITF rankings are points are calculated. ITF Pro circuit tournaments. The first thing is tournament categories. ITF Pro circuit tournaments are categorized based on the prize money offered. The higher the prize money, more ranking points are at stake. Tournaments are categorized into the following groups. $15,000 million, $15,000, lowest category $25,000, after that $60,000, after that $80,000, after that $1 lakh dollars, and after, after that $1 lakh $25,000. This is the highest category. So next thing is singles and doubles points. Players earn ranking points separately for singles and doubles competitions. The points earned in, earned in singles and doubles events are not combined. Players have distinct or different ranking for singles and doubles. So next is point distribution. <coughs> Winner, finalist, semi-finalist and the quarter finalist of a TIF tournament receives ranking points, points based on the tournament category. And these points are also awarded to players who reach earlier round but the number decreases as the player progresses through the draw. Next is consistency bonus. Players who consistently perform well in ITF tournaments receive a bonus. This means that if a player consistently reaches the later stages of a tournament, 
they receive additional points as a reward of for their consistency quality next is quality points quality points are awarded for defeating higher ranked opponents the number of quality points depending on the depends on the rounds in which the victory occurs and the opponent's ranking next is points durability points earned in ITF tournaments have a durability factor as time passes the points gradually decreases in value this is to encourage players to continue competing and maintain maintaining their ranking by consistency consistently earning points bonus points next bonus points bonus points are awarded for winning a certain number of matches in a row next is ITF entry system ITF entry system calculates a player's ranking based on the points that they have earned in the most recent 52 weeks. This rolling system ensures that a player's ranking reflects their recent performance. Next, minimum points. Players are guaranteed a certain num rankings, number of ranking points even if they lose in early rounds of a tournament. This provides an incentive for additional value for players to participate in the events. Next, points reduction for inactivity. Players who are inactive for certain period may have their ranking points reduced. This encourages consistent participation in the tournaments. It is important to note that specific point distribution can vary slightly depending on the tournament categories and region. Players can check the ITF website for detailed information on the point distribution for different categories of tournaments. The ITF Ranking system is dynamic with the points being added and deducted based on a player's performance over the course of the year. So how are the, the ranking points are calculated in ATP tournaments? ATP uses a detailed point distribution system to calculate ranking points for players participation in ATP 2 tournaments. The ATP rankings are crucial for determining a player's position in the professional tennis world and have a direct impact on their eligibility for entry into the higher level tournaments and here is a overview or summarize summarization of how ATP ranking points are calculated. ATP to, to, two tournaments. So first is tournament categories. ATP two tournaments are categorized based on their significance with different points allocation for each category. Main tournament category includes Grand Slam example Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon or US Open. After that is ATP Master 1000 example Indian Wells, Miami, Monte Carlo. After that is ATP Tour 500, examples Queen's Club Halle and up below that ATP Tour 250, example Brisbane, Delray Beach, Delray Beach. Next is points for rounds. Players earn points based on the round they reach in a tournament. The further a player progresses, the more points they accu accumulate. So points are awarded for each round including the first round, second round, third round, quarterfinal, semifinal and the finals. Grand Slam bonus points. So the Grand Slam tournaments offer a higher point than other events. For example, winner of a Grand Slam in singles events receives significantly more points than the winner of low or tie events. Next is ATP Master 1000 bonus points. ATP Master 1000 tournaments are also providing bonus points due to their higher level of competition. Winners, finalists and the other successful players in these events receive additional points. So next is performance bonus. Players who perform well in consecutive tournaments receive a bonus and this bonus is given for playing multiple events and achieving a good result in those events. Next is quality points. Points that are earned for defeating opponents de depending on opponent's ranking. Defeating higher ranked opponents result in more points. Next is points durability. ATP ranking points have a durability factor with the points decreasing in value over time. This also encourages players to consistently compete and maintain their ranking. Next is race to Turin. Turin. ATP Tour features a race to Turin for singles players which determine the participation in the ATP finals. Points accumulated during the calendar year contribute to a player's position in the race to Turin. Next is commitment bonus. Players may receive a commitment bonus for participating in certain mandatory tournaments. Next is points reduction for inactivity. Players who are inactive for an extended period may face a reduction in ranking points. This ensures that players who consistently compete are rewarded in their rankings. Next is entry system. ATP entry system calculates a player's ranking based on the points that they have earned in the most recent 52 weeks. 
The rolling system ensures that a player's ranking reflects their rank, their recent performance. The specific point distribution can vary for each category of tournaments, and players find it very detailed detailed information on the ATP website. The ATP ranking system is very dynamic, with the points being added and de deduction based on a player's performance over the course of the year. So the next question comes is how players should practice and prepare for an ITF or ATP tournaments. Pre so the answer is preparing for an ITF or an ATP tournament involves a combination of physical training, skill development, mental preparation, and the tournament specific planning. Here are some key aspects of how players can practice and prepare for these tournaments. So the first thing is that comes is physical training. And the first category comes here is endurance and cardiovascular conditioning. Tennis matches can be physic very phys physically demanding, developing endurance through running interval training and on-court drills to enhance cardiovascular fitness. Next thing is strength training. Build your strength to improve overall physical performance. So focus on core strength, leg strength and the upper body strength. Next is agility and speed training. So the long tennis requires a quick movement and agility. So incorporate speed drills, ladder exercises and, and on-court footwork drills into your training routine. Next is flexibility. Maintain flexibility through dynamic stretching and yoga. Flexibility is very crucial for preventing injuries and achieving a full range of motion on the court. So the next category is skill development for tournament preparation. So, so first subcategory that include in skill development is technical practice. So you have to work with your coach to re refine your strokes, footwork and overall technique. Regular technical practice helps improve consistency and short accuracy. So next second point match simulation. Simulation meaning, meaning is simulate match situations in practice to get accustomed to the pressures of competition like adjust to the pressure of competition practice tiebreakers set points and the match points to to enhance the mental toughness next is serve and return focus dedicate your practice sessions to serve and return skills as these are very important crucial for your match strategy next is variety of shots Develop variety of shots including volley drop shot and defensive shots and also add versatility to your game and this can prove very strategically advantaged to your performance. So next preparation that comes is mental preparation. So first point is mental toughness training. Work on mental resilience through visualization, positive affirmations and mental toughness exercise also develop a mindset that allows you to stay focused and compose during matches. Next point is pressure situations. Practice in high pressure situations to stimulate the con simulate the conditions of the tournament play. Create a situations where you need to save match points or maintain a lead. Next point is pre-match routine. Establish a pre-match routine that helps you relax and focus. This may include warm-up drills, visualization and a set routine before stepping into the court. Next point is post match analysis. Analyze your performance after each practice session and match. Identify strength. Your identify your strength and weakness and areas for improvement. So the la next point comes is tournament specific planning. First for point schedule planning. Plan your tournament schedule strategically. Also consider factors such as surface type, tournament category and travel logistics. Next point is acclimatization. If the tournaments are in different climates or time zones, arrive early to accommodate and adjust to the local conditions. Next point, nu nutrition and hydration. Maintain a well-balanced diet and stay hydrated. Nutrition also plays a very crucial or important role in sustaining energy level during your matches. Next point, rest and recovery. Prioritize adequate rest and recovery between matches. Proper sleep, stretching and massage can help you in recovery. 
नेक्स्ट पॉइंट एडेप्टेबिलिटी बी एडेप्टेबल इन योर गेम प्लान एस एस अपोनेंट्स एंड एडजस्ट लाइक चेक योर अपोनेंट एंड एडजस्ट योर स्ट्रैटेजी बेस्ड ऑन देयर स्ट्रेंथ एंड वीकनेस नेक्स्ट पॉइंट स्काउटिंग अपोनेंट्स फेमिलाइज योर सेल्फ विद पोटेंशियल अपोनेंट बाई स्टडिंग देयर प्लेइंग स्टाइल रिसेंट परफॉर्मेंस ऑल्सो डेवलप स्ट्रैटेजीज टू काउंटर देयर स्ट्रेंथ नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज ट्रेवल प्लानिंग plan your travel to tournament efficiently ensuring that you have sufficient time for rest and practice upon arrival so next category for tournament preparation is professional support so the first point here is includes that includes here is coaching work with a qualified coach who understand your game and can provide valuable insights and guidance next point is physiotherapy consult with a physiotherapist to address your physical problems and develop injury prevention strategies next point mental coach consider working with a mental coach to enhance your mental resilience and concentration next point team collaboration foster good communication with your coach physio and other support staff the cohesive team can contribute to your overall preparation remember and note this Preparation is an on- ongoing process, and continuous improvement is essential for success in professional tennis. Adapt, adapt to your training and preparation method based on your progress, feedback, and the specific challenges posed by the different tournaments. So, that's all for today. That's it. If you enjoyed our video, like, share, and subscribe our channel. See you in the next video. Bye. ये yeah. mm.